All right, friends, welcome to... All right, friends, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide for this week. My name's Pete. Today, I'm on the Madawaska River up in central Ontario. I'm here with a friend of mine, Dave Helsden, who in part has organized a trip of about 20 people, and we're exploring one of Ontario's iconic whitewater canoeing rivers, the Madawaska River. Uh, it's called the Lower Madawaska River Provincial Park, where we're staying right now. And uh, I'm looking forward to it because I don't do a lot of white water simply because it's just easier to do lake water trips when you're mostly solo. Uh, but today I'm going to be stepping out of my normal comfort zone and checking out some probably 15 or 18 sets of rapids today and then a couple more tomorrow. And uh, it's, it's June, halfway through June or so, a little bit chilly, but uh, I'm looking forward to it and uh, it's going to be a... An interesting experience don't have tons of experience doing this so let's find out how things are gonna turn out The Madawaska River is part of the St. Lawrence River drainage basin in central Ontario and it stretches for 143 long miles. It's surrounded by endless forests and rolling hills bordering the southern reaches of the Canadian Shield. Mostly used for logging in the late 19th century, it's now a primary source of whitewater recreation for countless paddlers each year. I've spent many decades canoeing on calm, peaceful lakes all over Ontario, but that peacefulness has just made me a bit soft when it comes to dealing with rough waters and dangerous obstacles. I like to move when I decide to paddle, but when the current grabs me and I'm committed against my will, well, that's a whole new experience. Our group of about 20 adrenaline freaks set up camp on the edge of a set of rapids called Crooked Rapids. Sounds like something meant to throw you for a loop. The trips back and forth to the cars were quite manageable, only a few hundred yards away. Unfortunately, when I first arrived, I was attacked, yes, literally attacked, by an angry partridge. It flared its neck feathers and continued to actually bite my clothing every time I turned my back. Yeah, fun times. As we unloaded the canoes at the launch point, it was nice to see enthusiasm and youthful anticipation on the faces of the group. 
I also felt good, though my years of experience led me to feel just a bit of caution and guarded anticipation. That's when my fortunes began to unfold like a bad dream right in front of me. I was ordered to board a vessel that seemed to have the nimbleness and maneuverability of a warship. Before I could really let that sink in, I found myself staring directly into the eyes of a beast that could only be described as an attack canine of the fiercest kind. Thankfully, looks can be deceiving, and he turned out to be quite a gentle beast. My paddling partner confirmed what I suspected, and that is that our capable vessel was just a bit harder to control than most of the canoes on the trip. I dared not tell anyone for fear of their ridicule and inevitable accusations of, it's a poor paddler who blames his canoe. The first rapids challenged our ability to keep the battleship pointing straight ahead. But somehow we survived the initial attempt of the river to destroy any confidence I might have gained by conquering my first obstacle. As we approached our next big challenge on this meandering river of horror, okay, it looked nice, but I could sense it was looking to avenge its loss and not having claimed me into its icy froth at the previous obstacle. After a challenging exit at the top of an impassable set of rapids, we encountered a freshly rested colony of about 9,500 mosquitoes that had been preparing for our arrival for weeks. The spine compressing canoes weighed about 460 pounds each, or something like that, and required 11 people to help lift each one onto the back of every hapless victim who drew the shortest straw. 
Despite their laughs of apparent joyfulness and encouraging conversations, I knew what really lie in the heart of each of my travel-weary companions. How to survive the next terrifying watery trial. faster than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was one. That was cool. Videographers in the eddy. Dave cut across the inside of the island. I don't know if we can do that. Do we want to cut right, right through here? Like right now, like this? No, not, no, that's gonna take us through that, okay. Uh-oh, so I guess right, like this. Uh -oh. Straight on? Well, that's the biggest part. That's the guy's hole. That's why I said wait. I didn't know what you meant. I just know that when I hit something like that, I don't want to be sideways. No, I'm not. Do you notice I can't paddle? Uh-oh. Where am I going? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Wow. 
Wow, we just went through the biggest crud. Follow us, it's fun! <laughs> So, how was my life changed forever? Well, before this weekend, I thought I would likely never bother to risk my life challenging whitewater because it would take decades of practice to survive even the smallest set of rapids. But I now see that a few hours on the water can generate enough confidence to at least cautiously start to take on new paddling challenges in whitewater. I learned not to fear what I didn't know, but to confront head-on some of those pre-existing barriers I felt my whole life. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching my introduction to Whitewater, and I hope it's inspired and entertained you. I'd like to thank each one of my newly made acquaintances and maybe even friends if I ever see you guys again. Each one of you seems to have brought something useful or fun to the table. Well, even if it was just food. I thank you guys for all unknowingly pulling me out of my comfort zone to make me a better outdoorsman and paddler. I am learning every single day. Well, join me again next week for something. And until then, remember, love God, hate sin, and, well, keep your paddles in the water. Oh.